Hello, I'm Craig Barton and welcome to this tutorial that's going to hopefully teach you how you can build a quiz dead easily on my Diagnostic Questions website. Now I'm going to be honest, diagnosticquestions.com is not the easiest website to navigate. Me and my friend Simon built this years ago and it's kind of spiralled out of control. As you'll see there, I think there's what, 60,000 maths questions on the site? But lots of teachers get in contact with me to say, how can I easily build a quiz? Now, why would you want to build a quiz on diagnostic questions? Well, I think there are four reasons and we'll go through each of these, but I'm going to focus in on the first one because I think this is the most common and possibly the most important, and that is to assess prerequisite knowledge of your students before you teach them a new idea. And diagnostic questions are fantastic for doing this. So let's imagine that I'm about to teach my students the wonderful world of adding and subtracting fractions, the lucky things. Now before I dive into all that adding and subtracting fun, I want to assess their prerequisite knowledge. So I want to make sure that before I teach the new idea, they're really secure in things like lowest common multiple, because obviously that's going to be very important, equivalent fractions, so making sure they adjust that numerator, simplifying fractions, they might need to do that when they get their final answer, and also when things get a little bit tricky, perhaps I'm going to chuck in a few mixed number improper fractions in there. So there's four examples of prerequisite knowledge that I would like to assess my students' understanding of before I teach them the new idea of adding and subtracting fractions, which is going to build upon this knowledge. Now, one tool that I've put together over the summer, this is a, an insight into my rock and roll lifestyle, is what I call the super spreadsheet. And the super spreadsheet is going to be ideal for building all the types of quizzes that you could ever want to on diagnostic questions. And I'm going to show you now how I would use the super spreadsheet to build myself a quiz to assess these four items of prerequisite knowledge. So here we go. So this is the super spreadsheet. And if you're wanting to access this yourself, if you're watching this on YouTube, there's a link just below the video, which will take you directly to it. Now, every teacher loves a spreadsheet, right? And this is a flipping massive one. It is rammed full of different topics. So you'll see in column A, we've got algebra, and that then goes down to number, geometry, and so on and so forth. Column B then breaks it down into its kind of next level topics. So basics of algebra, expressions, fractions, and so on. Then we've got the quiz now. In column F, we've got a link to a quiz. And then in column G, we've also got a link to a quiz. Now, it's important to say that each of these quizzes are clones of each other. So what do I mean by that? Well, if I just show you an example, let's go into read and write expressions one. And then I'll also open the quiz B version of that. If I just show you quiz A and we just do a preview by clicking here, you'll see that the first question is, if we want to write M multiplied by four using algebra, we would do. And if I show you quiz B and we look at question one, here it comes, it's just building up a bit of drama here. There we go, M multiplied by seven. So you can see that it's testing the exact same idea, but the orders of answers have changed and the numbers have changed. Right, so back to my quiz that I want to build. So I'm teaching adding and subtracting fractions. So I want to assess my students' prerequisite knowledge. So the first thing on my list, if I get it here, was I wanted a question on lowest common multiple. So I'm going to find that. Now, a couple of options. You can just do a bit of scrolling down here until you get to number, and then you can look up factors, multiples, and primes, and we should see we've got a few um, highest common factor, lowest common multiple quizzes there. Or you can do a bit of control F, um, and then you can type in what you're looking for. So I'm going to type in LCM and it'll find it straight for me, whatever you fancy uh, with that one. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a take a look at this first quiz and I'm going to see if there's anything useful for me here. So I'm going to use the quiz preview button to have a look and I can just flick through. Now I'm looking just for a straightforward lowest common multiple question. Ah, these are all kind of wordy ones which are about uh, students deciding whether they need a factor, multiple or so on. So not, that's not quite what I'm looking for. So let's have a look at quiz two down here. Let's have a look at this one. Quiz preview. Ah, this is looking more like it. Yeah, nice. Okay, there's the one I want, lowest common multiple. Now, here's the special thing. You could just grab that question straight away and put it into a PowerPoint or whatever, but I'm going to show you something better than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this Insights button down here, Insights. And if I click on this, it shows me all the data 
on every student who's ever answered a question as part of this quiz. And we can see here, this question two, this has been answered over 16,000 times. And we can also see that these, uh, this data is arranged from worst answered question through to best answered. So this question two, this is a bit of a stinker for our students. But whenever I'm putting together a quiz for prerequisite knowledge, I actually want to know which are the worst answered questions because that sets an alarm bell off in my mind that if the rest of the world's struggling with this question, then the chances are my students will struggle with it, so I better ask it them so I can help support them with it. Right, this is the bit where you've got to really concentrate. This is what I mean about diagnostic question being a little bit on the quirky side. So I'm gonna, I want that question, so I'm gonna add it to a quiz. So this is what I do, watch this, right? I click on it once, and that takes me to what I'm gonna call the question insights page. Now this is a really useful page where you um, often get the explanations for each of the answers provided by the author, and you can also see student explanations and so on. But if you want to add it to a quiz, you've gotta click the question one more time. Now I know what you're thinking, why on earth do I need to do that? You'll get used to this, we'll be doing it a few times. So I'm gonna click it one more time, and that goes from the question insights page to what I'm gonna call the question go page. Can you see it's got go in the URL? And once you get to this page, you then get the option that you need, which is add to quiz. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click add to quiz, and then it's gonna say, do I want to add it to um, a pre-existing quiz or do I wanna create a new one? Well, I want a new one. I'm gonna call this prereq fractions because it's my prerequisite knowledge question, a quiz for fractions. Clever, hey? Right, gonna click add to quiz and that question is now in a brand new quiz. So what I need to do now is find the other questions to join it in the quiz. So my next prerequisite knowledge was equivalent fractions. So let me go to my spreadsheet and let's find fractions, fractions basic. I've got equivalent fractions one visual. No, I think I'm gonna have a look in equivalent fractions two. Let's have a look here. So here's my quiz. I can preview it by clicking this pre quiz preview button. Yeah, this is looking good. So let me go into insights. Let's have a look how students are getting on with these. Oh, hello, what's this one? Question four. Yeah, that's the kind of question I'm after. That'll test kids' knowledge of equivalent fractions. So what am I gonna do? Play along with me here. I'm gonna click it once and I go to the insights page. It's useful to have a quick read there so I can familiarize myself with why students may go wrong. And then what am I gonna do? I'm gonna click it one more time and I'm at the go page. So now I can add it to quiz and nicely pre-selected for me is the quiz I've just done pre-rec fraction. So I'm gonna add that to the quiz as well. Right, let's quickly do the other ones. So I want one on simplifying fractions. So let's have a look, there we go, simplify fractions. This is looking good. Give that a click. Just check how this quiz is looking. Yeah, this is looking nice. Right, let's click on insights. Let's have a look, let's find ourselves a good question. Bit wordy that one. Ah, this is the kind of thing I'm after. Simplify 42 over 56. Some nice chunky numbers that are gonna take these students a bit, a bit, of, bit of thinking about to get that right. So I'm gonna click on it once. I go to the insights page. Um, I can, if I want here, uh, read explanations given by the students. So there's a, there's a classic one there. I can filter it by the different answers. So I can see how many, uh, what students who answered B went for and so on and so forth. But all I'm interested in here is adding it to my quiz. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna click on it again, and I'm at the questions go page. I'm gonna click add to quiz, prereq fractions, add to quiz. Nice, we're getting on a roll now, hey? Right, final one. I want something to do with mixed numbers and improper fractions. Here we go, mixed numbers and improper. There we go, let's have a look in quiz one. So give that a click. Uh, let's have a quick preview. Mm, yeah, this is the kind of thing I want. Okay, fine, so let's have a look at insights and choose a question. Now, of course, you could pick a so-called easier question, one that kids get right, to give them a bit of boosting confidence. But as I say, if it's prereq knowledge, I'm quite interested in where students are struggling, so I don't want anything to be to lie lurking underneath. I wanna, I wanna uncover it. So this one is causing students problems. Convert three and one-fifths to an improper. Right, I'll have that one. So I'm gonna give that a click. And then I can have a read and I can read student explanations if I want, whatever I want to do on this page. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click that question again. I get to my questions go page. Here we go. What am I gonna click on now? Yeah, add to quiz. Prereq fractions, add to quiz. 
All right, we're sorted. I just want those four questions in my quiz. So now the question, the question is, where the flipping heck is this quiz? So now we hover over here to questions and we click on the questions page and this takes you to the questions index page where you can see all those 60,000 questions. But what we want are quizzes. So if I click on quizzes here, this will take me to the quiz page. And then if I click on, well, you can see it there in fact, but if you want all your quizzes together, if you click on my quizzes, you'll be able to see them. And there's the quiz that we've just created here. Now, if I click into this quiz, we can just take a quick look at it, a quick preview, check that we're happy with it. If we're not happy with it, we can edit it at this point here by clicking on the little pencil and we could get rid of a question or change the order. But what we could also do, and this is really interesting, is at the moment, this is a private quiz. It's just for you and any of your students you choose to assign it to. But let's say, for example, you wanted to share this with your department because everyone's teaching adding and subtracting fractions and you want to set this quiz to all, have the ability for other teachers to set this quiz to their kids. So that's when you need to click publish. Otherwise that quiz will remain private. So if you click publish, are you sure you get this big warning? You can't edit it after you've published it. Yeah, I'm happy to that. So now that's published. So now you can share that link to that quiz and your colleagues could set it as well. Um, or you can share it with the whole world. It's completely up to you, whatever you fancy. So now, um, how do you go about uh, making sure your students can access that? So let's uh, go backwards and let's find that quiz again. Here it is there. Well, we just click assign to class. And once you've clicked assign to class, you choose the class you want to assign it to, write them a comment if you want, choose a start date and an end date. And here's the thing. This is why I think this is a really useful thing to do because how good would it be if before you teach a new idea, you could assign this prerequisite knowledge quiz before you teach the new idea? so that the kids have already had a chance to have a go at it. You've got all the results things, of course it automatically marks it for you. And then you can see where the problem areas of prerequisite knowledge are, and then you can spend your valuable class time intervening and supporting students with the identified problematic areas, as opposed to what I tend to find myself doing is asking the prerequisite knowledge questions at the start of a unit in class, and you waste quite a lot of time because you go through quite a few uh, questions where the kids actually knew it. So in fact, it's better to use that precious class time focusing on the stuff you know now that they don't know, if that makes sense. So I really like this idea of setting a prerequisite knowledge quiz before the lesson, and then you can use valuable lesson time to intervene on problematic areas. But that's not the only quiz that you can build. Let's go back and see three others. So a prerequisite knowledge quiz is one type of quiz you might wanna build using diagnostic questions, but you can also do other ones. You can build an end of topic uh, homework quiz. What I like to do with this is let's say I'm building a 10 question quiz. Let's have the first five questions be a mixture of topics that students have uh, met in the past. And then the next five be topic specific questions based on what they've just studied. I think that's a good mixture of retrieval versus assessment of understanding of the current. Uh, you could also do a good old end of unit quiz. So let's just say, let's go back to fractions. You've taught students the beauty of all things they can do with fractions. So then you can go to the super spreadsheet, pick questions from all those little quizzes, build them together in one super, super uh, quiz and assess students' understanding of the whole concept. And finally, I'm a big, big fan of using that super spreadsheet and diagnostic questions to build low stakes quizzes. So let's say, for example, I would choose 10, a 10 question low stakes quiz. I'm going to pick 10 questions from 10 different areas on that super spreadsheet bang them in a quiz, assign them to my students and see where students are at. And the beauty of doing all of this, of course, is that all the quizzes are automatically marked for you once your students do them, so that then you can look for the problematic areas. I tend to uh, look for the two worst answered questions from any quiz and then address them with the whole class um, in class time. Right, I've tried to summarize the steps that we've gone through in this video for creating a quiz on a single slide. Now it's very appropriate there's a magnifying glass there on this slide because you'll need one to read this text, but I'm gonna put it um, underneath the video description as well. So we just go through this quickly. So the first thing you do, you've gotta find that first question. That's the key. And using Quiz Insights, 
using quizzes on the super spreadsheet is a good way to do that. Once you've found that first question, you click on that question image until you get to that question go page that's got the add to quiz on the bottom. You then click add to quiz, give your quiz a name, and then that's already in there then. So then you find the next question that you want to include. Then keep clicking till you get to that question go page and click add to quiz, and it should default to the quiz you've just created, but just uh, double check that. Keep going, you can add up to 20 questions, I think, until you've completed your quiz. And then to find the quiz that you've just created, go to the quiz homepage and look under my quizzes, and it will be there. Uh, once you click on that quiz, you can assign it to your students straight away. Or if you edit the quiz, clicking on that little pencil and click publish, you can then share it with your colleagues or with the rest of the world. And if you want to get your students on the system, it's all 100% free, so then you can assign stuff to them and it'll mark it for them and all that kind of stuff. The best way to get started with that is to visit our help section. That's help.ed.co.uk. And there's also live chat there where um, somebody will be happy to help you. Okay, hope you found that useful. Take care. Bye for now.